Back in 2004, I started Poofy Hair Productions to help the people who see the fuzzies. Since then, they decided to name it Visual Snow in about 2015 without telling me. At 2018, I finally got officially diagnosed with Visual Snow, and Dr. James Kundart out of Pacific University helped me get rid of it. Now, back in 2004, I was able to reduce it, not only define it, but I was also to go, able to go from three thought processes down to one. I used to be able to think about two things at the exact same time, full bore. Now I've been able to, with Dr. Kunart's help, get rid of all of the static with my eyes open, except on blue skies. And on, on computer screens, there'll be a faint amount there. In both of those places, it, it, looks like a reg, it looks like a shower of static. And as I dug through the front part of my static, the main bulk of it, the red shower static appeared with my eyes closed. So those two things, uh, it's, it's effectively gone except for the smallest amount. In dimly lit rooms, I've had it big and chunky. I had severe visual snow. Um, and now it's, it's really faint and it's out of focus and it, it, the contrast is minimal. With my eyes closed, I used to be like this. And now I'm like this. So I've been able to reduce and massively reduce my visual snow. And I also have shimmering underneath the visual snow, which is one of the reasons why I'm dyslexic. And that may be the Erlen syndrome, or it may be my own. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to deal with diagnosing and treating visual snow, both Western medicine and some tree hugger stuff. Visual snow is caused by the veins in your eyeball being too small for your white blood cells. This causes a back pressure in your veins, and that causes your eye to distend. You can see this by looking at a blue sky, and you have little white um, dots shooting across in it, and that's your white blood cells. I no longer think that the increased cerebral spinal fluid pressure has anything to do with visual snow. Everybody I talk to just has the blue field effect, which means they have ocular visual snow. What I think is happening with that, um, being that there is one there's one thing about treatment of visual snow, the only one out there, um, the description will be below, that, that implies that increased cerebral spinal fluid pressure, which means pressures on your brain, is related to visual snow. What I think is happening is they drain the, the pressure off your brain and the shimmering, which I mentioned before, which may be the Erlen syndrome, but it's not like their demonstrations, which is the closest thing looks like a river, which is uh, something that looks like a river that's um, shimmering just in the small section as it goes across. And I, I, that means that I have my own syndrome, the wood syndrome. So I'm going to eventually get my spinal fluid checked for pressure. And if it has shimmering and I get rid of the shimmering, that's one more step to getting rid of everything. As far as where I'm at currently, I've keep improving forward, moving forward. The static with my eyes closed keeps getting more smooth and the raining static behind it, the red shower, is less and less. So everything's going wonderfully. There are three different ways to be diagnosed with visual snow. Go to your primary care physician, a neurologist, or a neurooptometrist. Your primary care physician will, won't have the slightest idea what you're talking about. The neurologist may have heard of it before, but it, they probably won't. And a neurooptometrist who's going to be the only person to treat it. So when you, when you, if you're going to deal with your primary care physician, the first thing you want to do is email them ahead of time and give them documents discussing the treatment of it and email them that, and they'll be able to start a discussion with you. It, it's, it's, been greatly documented, so it's not like it, they're going to give you, they're going to fight you tooth and nail on it. Most doctors are going to be flexible and getting informed about visual snow and how it works and what it, what what the medications do, will make it easier for that conversation to occur. Now, a neurologist, they'll be able to help you a lot better, but again, it's still a conversation. The neurooptometrist is going to be the only person who's treated it. And they're going to do an extensive eye exam. So if you're getting your glasses done, there's no reason to go to your optometrist beforehand. And they'll, they'll discuss the static with you, and they'll be able to treat it for you. So the anti-seizure medication is not being used for seizures because you don't have them. If you do, then you don't want to do this.
The Mictol is your bread and butter, as far as I'm concerned. Um, if you have luck with azimodiodide, then great, but Lamictal is the thing that's widening out my veins. I'm using that in conjunction with Verapamil and Lasix. Now, out of the three, Lasix is something you need to be very concerned about. It'll affect your thyroid, your blood pressure, and your potassium levels. We're not trying to get up on levels for the purpose of fighting, preventing seizures. We're trying to get up on levels to determine whether or not we're going to have side effects. After we don't have any side effects, then you, you know it's going to work for you. And these medications you can go off of one day. So you can take one day, go off the next day, and it's not going to do you any harm. The, the Lamictal, um, I'm doing, currently doing 200 the first day. And at that time, I add in Lasix at 20 milligrams and Verapamil at 180 milligrams. And then the next day, I go up to 400 Lamictal and keep, keep on that for four days and then going off. Now. These medications do two things. The, the Lasix and the Lamictal widen out the veins of your eyes, and the Lasix and Verapamil lower your blood pressure. By doing them in combination, you're, you're allowing your vein to be stretched out while you're lowering your blood pressure. That, the lowering your blood pressure allows your vein to be stretched out easier. And once again, you aren't having seizures, so you don't need to stay on it. You just want to get on it for the side effect of widening out your veins. And this is an on-off thing because you, you don't, it's not, I, when I went on it, I went on it for a year. And after the first month or so, I didn't see any improvement for a full year. I added the second medication, Verapamil, and then I got improvement. But I, I wanted to cycle earlier. I just didn't because I don't want to mess with it. But it's a permanent improvement. It's not something that goes away with medication. If you're just taking the Verapamil, it's a blood pressure medication. So if you stop taking it, then it's going to raise your blood pressure and the fuzzies are going to come back. But if you stretch out the veins of your eyeball while you're lowering your blood pressure, then they're not. The main concerns are for Verapamil and Lasix is your blood pressure. You don't want to go below 115 over 70 because it'll really mess you up. This is a concern. This is a concern you have to be very concerned about. And after you know you're good on the medications for... Um, levels, then going on and off at one day to the next is not going to be a problem because Lasix and Verapamil, they're only in your system from four to eight hours. Then they're out of your system. The, again, with the Limictol, it, it goes in your system, but you don't have to keep it in there. The only purpose is of, of staying on it is if you actually have seizures. So you're trying to get a side effect of widening out the veins. So it's not important that you stay on them long term. So you stay on them for four days and you drop them, then your vein stays widened out. Your, your body gets used to not having your system for three or four days, and then you cycle back on, and your vein winds out some more. So this is how I've been able to drastically reduce my visual snow. And this is a primary concept that I want to get by in this video. It, it's, it's the medications are doing what they're doing, but it's, you, you, there, it's a two-part problem, like getting down to one thought process for me. You, you have your veins are too small and your blood pressure is too high even if it's only a little too high. And if you lower your blood pressure, it makes it easier to widen out the veins. Back in 2004, I took Solaris, Cordialife, Liquid Trace Minerals, and Chromium Picolate. You want the rare kind. These have a permanent effect, and they, they will reduce the speed, size, contrast, and brightness of the static. Um, in my video, Getting Rid of Videos of Snow, almost halfway there, that's where you want to start out going through all my stuff because I have lots of information on there other than just medications, but I go through the medications on that as well. And Snowblind with the Sight of Lightning is 45 minutes long and has lots of good information to help you live a better life. Now, if you want to get a hold of me, you can leave me a message on one of, my mes uh, on one of the videos or send me an e email at poofyhairproductions at gmail.com. And... Um, my notifications for videos and my messages through YouTube are kind of skittish, so I don't know if that's going to go away. So if you, if you don't hear from me in a day or two, then send me another message. It's perfectly fine. I'm here to help. Zappy, zappy. This has been a Poofy Hair production.